Hey boaters, Keith McGowan here. I am the Outboard Dad here to help you have a better boating experience. My Outboard Motor Buying Guide is just about done with the finishing touches going on it right now. I got some more details in there. I got it updated and soon to be on Amazon. $20 value if you purchase it and you send me an email with proof of purchase at keith at outboarddad.com. I will give you a free session over the phone to help you with a motor you're working on. Hopefully it's not one of those thick ram motors hopefully it's another motor and uh, we can help you get out on the water today we're continuing on with our rebuild project it's coming together we're in the home stretch now it's very little things but it's the detailed things now that are most important so let's get into the next steps here we're going to go ahead and remount our oil tank it's been sitting upside down like this so that we don't spill oil well maybe i spilled a little bit so we want to be sure first we're going to hook up the fill line that goes down to our oil pump because if we flip this over it's going to start dumping out so we're going to go ahead and hook this up first and then we'll get this in place tighten up our clamp here make sure it's on all the way what we're going to do when we fire this motor up we will have double the oil running in the fuel. So we'll be running oil, a uh, heavier oil through the fuel as opposed to just using the injection system. This drains down into our oil pump. If you remember, we had the gear there that's turning our oil pump. So right now it's, it's not dry because I didn't drain it completely, but it's gonna have air pockets and air bubbles in it. So you wanna go ahead and run this motor on oil for two reasons. Number one, we have a break-in period. So we wanna run double the oil, one and a half times at least, you know, there's a lot of different schools of that thought out there. But we want to make sure we have oil in our fuel because it's going to take some time to work the air bubbles out of that and make sure it's working efficiently. The new owner may decide not to use the pumping system. As you remember, there is a plastic or fibrous or composite for a better, uh, better word that they like to use for plastic that runs this gear. So, or that, that runs this pump. And it has been known to fail. It was in great shape. There wasn't anything wrong with it, but it's up to the, to the new owner whether they want to do it that way or not. So now that that's hooked up, we'll get the rest of the bolts in here and then we'll continue on putting this stuff back together. Next, we'll go ahead and mount our coil packs. We left all the bolts right in the same place so it'll go right back on. I checked the grounds. They were nice and clean. Not only were they clean, but somebody put some liquid electrical tape on it to keep it from getting corroded, which is pretty cool. Threads were all in good shape, so we're gonna put this on there. As you can see, we have two plugs that plug into the top, and as this goes together, we're gonna to see where things go, and we're also gonna watch the old video to make sure we didn't miss anything. Spark plugs are actually still in the uh, spark plug wires, so we'll get this mounted. And then we're gonna double check all of our hoses, all of our connections, but let's get one by one, let's get this on there next and then we'll do the, uh, the other electronic parts. That's the technical term. We have a few connectors from up top here. We'll make sure. So it looks like this one goes on here. And this one goes on here. And it looks like we have a couple of other connectors up here we'll go to. I see a ground wire here, so we want to take this wire off, or this bolt out, and we'll put this ground on. There's a ground here that connects to the head, and it also has a little fork that holds the temperature sensor in. So again, I'm gonna hook up all the stuff that's obvious, and then I'm gonna go back and watch my videos and double check to make sure there's nothing that I missed. Let's get the rest of those electronics over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put all of our, all of our spark plugs in. This way, it's just all sealed up. I'm not accidentally, it's hard to drop something into the hole this way, but let's just keep it all covered up and keep it nice and clean. We'll get all the plugs in here mounted, and then we'll get the rest of the electronics up, get our thermostats on, we got those new. Um, that we ordered the Quicksilver original OEM parts. There's another ground over here that'll go. I'm sure I have the sensor 
over there. So I'll put that together when we get that sensor. So this side of the motor is the one that has all of our controls, so to speak. It has our starter solenoid, our paraton trim solenoids, connects to our starter motor here. We also have our bleed tubes here that we went through and made sure everything was connected properly. I grabbed the two bolts that hold this on in place here, but we're going to put it on and leave it a little bit loose because we're going to have to move things around to get these in and so on and so forth. So if you remember, we kind of left it all together here <laughs> and like a little mess, uh, which I think I find fun, but there's actually three bolts. One goes down here on the bottom. And then I also noticed there is a bunch of wires here that are all ground wires, right? All of these ground wires, they're nice and clean already, which is really great to see. If they were not, sometimes I would cut the ring terminals off the end of it and uh, go ahead and crimp new ones on if needed. You always want to make sure you have as good clean grounds as you can. All of this was in great shape. So let's go ahead and mount this up. Now I could pull each component off of this and clean it nicely. I kind of like a light film oil on everything, keeps it from corroding. That's probably why the wiring and why those connections are in such good shape. There are products you can buy to spray on your connections. White lithium I find works pretty well. A lot of this is just kind of inside the engine compartment here. If you have a spit back or let's say it's a little too heavy oil, it'll have this kind of fog inside here of, of oil and it really keeps things from corroding. It makes a bit of a mess, but it does keep things from corroding up. So like I said, I'm not gonna tighten these down all the way. I'm just gonna get them on there and then we'll go ahead and start connecting our wires. This goes up top. This is my sensor for my other head. So I know this is gonna go up and over and we're gonna actually put it under that control. We'll swing it over here and then we'll go ahead and put this sensor back in place. So it's just a round sensor that goes in there and it has a ground wire on it as well. Looks the same as this side here. So we're just gonna do a process of elimination little by little. So now that we have our sensor mounted for this side of the head, we can tighten up the support with the ground wires. And then we see these two wires that get snaked over the top and they go right onto our switch here. Connect those. It's just a switch so it doesn't matter which one goes where. So this module here gets mounted on the top. There's three holes for it. So we get the three bolts for that. Noticing also, so now that we have these wires connected, we have this module that goes on the top. This has a ground wire also that'll get put underneath there. And we'll make sure we get that connected with the bolts securely. So after looking at this a little closer, realize that this is the one that goes in here. This was the one that come, came from the stator that we originally plugged into there. It's funny how it's the same plug, usually they're not. But after double checking, this one goes into this plate here, which goes underneath this little spot here. Another bolt goes in here that we'll get. Oops, we just popped off. There's a little spacer because this holds the cover for the engine. So we'll get those plugged in properly and get that mounted and we'll continue on. So we're just gonna keep a close up look at all these wires and connections here, right? We're gonna first take the obvious ones, right? Where they go. We already have our battery cable hooked up. So we know this is for our starter. I see all my grounds here and I have the bolts for these grounds that all go together here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the bolt in there. I have another ground wire here that I'm assuming goes next to it, or it could go on the same bolt. I don't see why not, but we wanna put it back the way it was. And then let's see what else we have. We have our power tilt and trim relay. So this is our power tilt and trim wire with the two plugs, so that's pretty obvious. Green goes to green, blue goes to blue. Otherwise, when you push the button up, it'll go down and down will go up. So we want it to go up when we push the up button and down when we push the down button. So we'll hook this up. Now we have some wires here, yellow to yellow. Yellow to yellow comes out of it. So that comes right over here. But first I'm gonna hook up my battery connection here or my 12 volts to my starter because it's kind of behind it. So let's get that in there first. 
Now let's see if we can do it without dropping washers and nuts and having to scrounge for them. Now obviously we don't have our battery connected right now. Put the cover back on this. That's what keeps it nice and clean. These covers and everything are, are key. Now we can plug this wire back into where it was. And then we have another one here, which is shorter, goes on this side, All right? Actually, I'm gonna put this one behind this other wire here. So it fits a little nicer. And then we have two wires here for my sensor, blue and blue. There is a, a sensor in that oil tank up there that will set the alarm off. It's the same alarm circuit as the overheating. It may beep a little differently some, on some models, but on this model, I think it just goes ahead and sets the alarm off. And we have our wires here for our primer solenoid. If you remember, they went down through this fitting. I just pulled them out so you could see them. And this way they get tucked behind and they're black with a yellow stripe, or yellow with a black stripe and ground. And that's what's right here. So we'll go ahead and hook them up. Sometimes in tight spots, it's easier to grab the end with a pair of needle nose so you can get it in there all the way, make sure it locks in. Close up nicely so that's connected. This is connected. This is our connection for our ignition. We have the brown circuit, which is our ignition kill wire which is another brown wire here that we're gonna connect. We'll look at it closely, see if there's any other connections that we missed. And now we just need a ground cable from our battery to ground because we already have our positive cable here. We're ready to go. If you remember, we did have a linkage piece that broke. So my buddy Clark's got one. We're gonna go visit him. He's got that linkage piece. He's also got one screw because there's one screw missing out of the carburetors. Who knows how that happened? If I remember correctly, it wasn't there when we took it apart, but I can't blame somebody else. If I'm the one working on it, it's got to be done right. So we'll go ahead and get those parts. Meantime, I'm going to double check my old videos, double check all my wiring here. Next thing we have to do is thermostats. So we'll get on that next because we have the tubing set up for that. And then there's some tubing in the back here that we're going to connect up as well, looking at the old videos and we'll continue on. Then, then we'll be ready to fire this up. We're going to get some gas in there. We're going to pump the squeeze ball and see where this goes. Hopefully it makes a lot of smoke, kicks over, and runs like a champ for somebody for many years. So please like, subscribe, send me any comments that you have, and we hope to see you out on the water. Have a great day.